China's 12367 Immigration Service platform has received nearly 11 million calls since its launch in April 2021, with its service covering 143 countries and regions across the world. And the bulk of overseas calls have been from United States, Australia and Japan, according to the National Immigration Administration. And besides, Shanghai police have established an express platform for the foreigners and also overseas talents to continuously staying here in China coming to China and Shanghai and integrating into the city. And today, we're very glad to be joined by Cai Baodi, Director of Visa Department, Shanghai Exit Entry Bureau, and Wu Lisi Hotline 12367 Operator. And they will tell us more about the hotline and also what are the questions frequently asked by the foreigners. Well, good to have you with us. Um, so, Ms. Wu, tell us first of all the function of the 12367 and also um, the purpose of it. Okay, so Shanghai 12367 hotline is a unified service platform of Shanghai Accenture Bureau. It operates the 24 hours uh, con answering calls related to exit and uh, entry matters in Shanghai. It's including the uh, business consulting suggestions and the tip of calls. It's also to provide the high quality immigration management service and help the public to solve the problems. Right, so that means it actually facilitates uh, foreigners and overseas talents to continuously coming to China and Shanghai and also help them uh, with almost all the issues they have, like visa issues, uh, um, non-criminal record issues and everything maybe they could have. And also the call is running like 24-7 non-stop? Yes. Well, that's a lot of work. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do you have any interesting stories to share with us while you were working? Um, have you encountered anything very interesting? Uh, I remember I received a call. A foreigner uh, came to Shanghai to have attend the business uh, activity. Before leaving, he went to the bond for a trip. Uh, when they took the uh, camera from his bag and took photos, the passport fell out oh. uh, and was lost. Uh, she, uh, he is uh, very urgently to call us and after that we contact the relevant department and immediately and to deal with this matter. Right, we actually have a caller on the line. Let's see what question uh, they have. Hello there. Hello, I'm Alexandra. I am recently graduated from university and my current student visa is valid until July. But, but I'm not sure um, if I can get my documents, my new documents before the expiration date. What should I do? Right, so basically there could be a time gap between the expir expiration days and all the documents ready for the visa renewal. So what are the things uh, she can do? Well, before she graduates, she can try to apply for extension of her student's visa. It's called a kind of residence uh, permit of study uh, with the documents from the school. Or if uh, she finished the study and she wants uh, some more time to stay, she can apply for a T visa for a short time. Right, T visa. Right. Right, okay. Does that answer your question? You can actually apply for T visa in between. And then with that time, uh, you can get your documents ready. If you're applying for another school, then you need maybe the school to offer you the actual offer. And if you're applying for a job, then you need a document to apply for the work permit. Is that right? Right. Does that answer your uh, question, okay. Alexandra? Uh, yes, but how many times can I apply for T visa? Well, normally we issue the T visa once when for her to prepare for some documents or prepare to leave China. But if she needs longer, for example, she's still she's still waiting for the work permit. And uh, when she provides the, the proof or evidence, we can try to give her extra extension. Okay, so every time you apply, it's going to be one month. If you need extra a extension, you need uh, extra proof. Got it? Yeah, thank you. That's perfect. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks. Right. Um, so you mentioned T visa. What exactly is T visa? T visa is kind of special visa for state. It's kind of state permit. Uh, normally, uh, one month, less than less than six months. Right. So it's like a short term visa to facilitate foreigners to stay here. Maybe like for for the case for Alexandra and also for other right. cases. 
for the period of uh, finishing the residence here and uh, before she leaves China, she can apply for it. It's a state permit called a TBS. Right, okay. I think we do have another phone call. Let's, uh, let's see. Hello? Hi. Hi. What is your name? Uh, Lucila. I'm from Argentina. Hi, Lucy. So uh, what, what is your question? My husband is a university teacher and he was thinking to apply for the permanent residence. Mm -hmm. what, he, what should he do? Right, to apply for permanent residence, what are the documents uh, they need? Well, there are some channels of, of applying for permanent residence. Say like uh, if she is working here, she, try, she can try to apply through the uh, university, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, your husband is working in the university, is that right, Lucica? A company? Yes. University, yeah. Yeah, maybe uh, recommended by the university to apply for a permanent residence. Or she can, uh, he can apply by himself, try to pro uh, provide some documents. Say like uh, um, if she got a doc doctor degree or what, or something like uh, if the salary meets the requirement every year for some uh, uh, standards, and uh, he can also apply for permanent residence. Okay, so Lucilia, does that uh, answer your question? Yeah, sure. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thanks. Right, there are quite a lot of uh, questions about visa extension and work permit and uh, and also I've heard that the, there's a new card called Five Star Card. So what exactly is that? Well, the Five Star Card is a, a new version of permanent residence card. Compared with the older one, uh, it has some improvement, improvements, just like uh, the number of the card is uh, changed from 15 figures into 18. And the chip inside is also uh, improved to satisfy the social needs. For example, if she, uh, the holder wants to travel in China or to launch in hotels or what, and the, the card is improved to um, machine read. And uh, when she when he used it uh, in this kind of uh, circumstances, it will be more convenient and efficient. Right. Uh, our caller Lucilla actually mentioned about applying for the permanent residence card. Mm -hmm. So for people who already have that uh, permanent residence card, do they still need a five star card? What What are the differences? Well, it's not necessary for he or she to apply for a new version because the older version is still uh, useful now and before the validity of the period. So both versions are also acceptable in the social use and during the last few months we uh, tried our efforts to make all the society uh, many circumstances to accept the both uh, version of um, the Venus card. Mm. So does that mean um, the five star card is the upgrade of the permanent residence card? Right. Right. So does that mean, uh, f you know, for the time being and also for for the next few years, maybe there are going to be five star cards uh, to replace the the permanent residence card? Um, it's a new version, but it, it doesn't mean that we will replace all of the older versions. So both uh, versions are uh, can be used at the same time. Right, okay. I think we have another call on the line. Let's see uh, what is the question. Hello? Ni hao? Hey, neng ting dao ma? Hello? 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 啊,你好,你好,我上之前上那个我刚拿到那个五星卡嘛,但是不知道这个是能用到什么用处,能能之前这个事情吗?啊,当然,so uh, uh, for five star card, you know what exactly are the functions? The five star card is a kind of ID card, it's almost the same with the Chinese ID card. It can be used as a travel document in China. For example, when you buy a flight ticket or train ticket, you can use it directly and uh, separately, mm. not together mm -hmm. with the foreign passport. And uh, this card is uh, almost normally 10 years valid, and uh, it means the holder can stay in China continuously, and the status is permanent. And uh, for example, if he want to work in China, he didn't um, uh, apply for the work permit. It means that he he can. Uh, work in China 
similar to a Chinese citizen. Right, so five star card is like a whole package. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's more convenient, it has more functions yes. uh, into it. Mm -hmm. uh, you have to well, the parents of the five star holders can apply for a, a visa or family reunion through the Chinese embassy abroad or through, through us. To apply for uh, to us, we can uh, issue the permit. Uh, it's a family reunion residence permit. But through the Chinese embassy or consulate abroad, they may issue the visa, just like a Q1 or Q2 visa, which is family reunion. And the visa is for short stay, but for the residence permit, they can apply for long term, less than uh, five years. Mm -hmm. uh, does that mean if he actually holds a five star card, does that help um, his relatives to to apply for maybe a longer term stay? Yeah, of course, because if he holds a five-star card, the, fam the family members, just like the parents and the wife and children, can apply for a family reunion, not like a short stay or tourist. Right. Mm. Uh, you have answered your question, because you have five cards, so for your family members, you can apply for a category of family reunion. It's not a short-term vacation. It's not a short-term vacation. Yes, so it's possible to stay in Shanghai and stay in China for a long time. This is the main thing that is related to your five-card card. It's a family reunion, so it can be longer than a normal vacation time. It's longer, so it's more easy. Have you answered your question? Yes, I've answered it. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you. 回答了，回答了，谢谢，谢谢。好的，谢谢你，中文讲得很棒，谢谢，谢谢，嗯，再见。嗯，再见。Right. Okay. Well, we did answer quite a lot of questions. Those are um various questions, but also all very interesting, very useful. Um, and also uh, foreigners who reside here in China for long time may sometimes need uh, no criminal record. Uh, when they need to uh, deal with some personal affairs here in China. So where can they get that? Well, for the foreigners stay in Shanghai and uh, they hold the valid residence permit for six months or more, uh, or they have the uh, permanent card, they can, if they want to obtain the non-criminal record within China, they can go the, they can apply in the Shanghai Excentry Bureau at, located at 1500 Mingsheng Road or go to the local Excentry office where they decide where mm. they decide mm. right, so they can go to wherever very close to them just find yes. the, the, the local uh, Excentry office or they can go to the headquarters in Mingsheng Road yeah right right okay we do have another call on the line hello Hello. Hi. What is your name? Uh, hi, my name is Olga. Hi, Olga. What is your question? Um, I wanted to ask. I have a foreign residence permit in China as a student. And when my relatives want to visit me in China, for what types of visa they should apply as members of the family of person with foreign residence permit in China? And should I provide them with any documents? Right. So. Is it the family reunion again or? No, it's a little bit different. All right. Because she studied in China and she holds a student's residence permit. And the family members can apply for a visa to visit her. And they can apply for S1, S2 visa, I means personal affairs. Right. And uh, if the parents or husband or children uh, want to stay longer, they can try to apply for a um, visa or residence permit. But uh, the residence permit period cannot exceed her student's residence permit. Right, okay. It's different so from that person who fit for family reunion. For family reunion, mm -hmm. oh, right. Does that answer your question? Is that clear? Uh, yes, yes, yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Right, okay. So um, um, from those previous questions, I realized. Uh, people who have the permanent residence, mm -hmm. uh, say the five-star card, 
and people with student visa um, for their relatives there are different types of visas they they need to apply right difference because the family reunion um, a purpose they can apply, maybe got the, the residence permit of uh, of Tuanju and it's a reunion yep. um, residence permit but for um, people who've shot visits we may give them the S2 visa or sometimes also the residence permit but the, not so long time because mm -hmm. maybe less than one year or less than six months right um, I know there's another visa called port visa mm -hmm. what is port visa well port visa is kind of uh, some arrival visa or it's called airport visa or seaport visa for foreigners who arrived in China in, in China they cannot apply beforehand before they uh, come to China they can apply first through our website and if it's approved we'll send them a notice they can board on the plane uh, uh, with this notice and uh, try to obtain the visa at the airport so it's called airport visa uh, so it's like a visa upon arrival. Mm -hmm. So when they actually arrived in China, yeah. and they can get it from uh, the airport or the port or wherever they, they landed. Yeah, airport or seaport, but apply beforehand and uh, get the visa at the site. Right, so you still need to apply beforehand. It's uh, not right. like those uh, visa on arrival, you don't have to do anything, but you actually automatically get the visa, but you still need to apply yes. beforehand. Mm -hmm. Right, we have another caller on the line. Let's. Uh, Hello? Hello. Hi, what is your name? Elisa Bagley. Hi, Elisa. What is your question? Uh, so, uh, I wanted to ask, uh, what ways can foreigners contact Exit Entry Bureau to provide suggestions, ideas, or solve problems with their application processes? You meant uh, where you can apply? Or, or, or what are the ways you can reach the Exit Entry Bureau? Uh, yeah, what what ways can, uh, can we contact the right. bureau? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, you can call us one two three six seven hotline, and uh, we can uh, give you the uh, po immigration policy, and uh, we can submit and transfer to the relevant department to uh, for the processing and give you the feedback. Okay. Oh. Yeah, so so basically, uh, one two three six seven is the number you mm -hmm. call. Uh, it's been running for quite some time, and it's running twenty four seven in different languages. And so it's very convenient for you just to call and ask your questions. Oh, great! Um, so w how how many languages? <laughs> how many languages? How many? Is it just yeah. English, or are there other other uh, languages available? Uh, mainly English, but uh, also Japanese or uh, uh, French. Uh, with with high. Right, we do have different languages, but mainly yes, English. So the majority of the staff members mm -hmm. speak English and Chinese, and but we do have a little bit of help from people who speak Japanese and uh, French. Yes. Okay, great. Thank you so much. Um, I have one more question. Yeah. That's okay. Yeah, sure. Uh, so, if an entrepreneur would like to come to China to set up a company, uh, which kind of visa should they apply for? For entrepreneur, what kind of visa? Well, uh, if a foreigner want to set up a business here or open a company here, of course it's welcome. And uh, he or she may apply for uh, it's called uh, F uh, F visa, M visa, uh, business visa, or uh, visa for personal affairs, and to, to through the Chinese embassy or consulate. And when they arrive here, we we'll check the documents he, he provides. For example, he want to if if he want to set up a business here. You may go through some business license or what, and uh, t t this kind of evidence. So we may give them a visa, a six months of visa, or even one year's residence permit. All mm -hmm. depends the documents she, he provides. So basically, say if they already entrepreneur, if already they, they they have a company, they are having a business trips, they can just directly apply for business visa. Yeah, if she already opens a company here, and, and uh, normally he will get the work permit. And if we got a work permit, we may issue a residence permit um, for him and normally one year residence permit to mm -hmm. work. 
Mm -hmm. So if you, uh, we were saying if uh, if the person already has business overseas and then they need a business trip here to China, they can just apply for the business visa. Right. If they are coming here to start up a company, that's a different case, right? They can actually just apply for um, uh, what type of visa just to to arrive in China, and then they need to uh, provide extra documents to set up start up a company here in China. Yeah, if he, he's still in the process of starting up the company, he may try to apply for extension of the business visa. When he finished uh, the setting up the company here, and uh, he may got a uh, work permit. In this case, we will issue the residence permit of work for him. Right. Does that answer your question? So. You can't go for the business visa, or you you, you can even go for the uh, for any type of visa to come to China. Then you need to apply for um, another uh, you know purposes for right. extend your visa into a different identity and purposes. True. Mm -hmm. Okay. Great. Okay. Does thank that make you. sense? Okay. Yeah. Thank you. So much. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much. Okay. So uh, we talked a lot about different types of visa. We talked about port visa earlier. Um, and um, we answered quite a lot of questions about all the different issues of the visa. So we heard quite a lot of different terms. We heard a foreign, foreigners permanent, uh, uh, was it uh, Chinese? Card. Yeah, a permanent re a residence card. There's a, a Chinese permanent residence residency. We have five star cards, and we have all different types. And also we have mm -hmm. student visa. Mm -hmm. So does that mean? Because uh, you mentioned many times about permanent. A residency. There are different types of those uh, residents, right? Right. For the visas, uh, the stay period is less than six months. For residence permit, and it's almost between uh, three months or six months, but less than five years. But for permanent residence card, it's normally valid for ten years. But for the children under eighteen years, it's five years valid. But the permanent card holders, they can stay in China for permanent period. Uh, but if uh, within 10 years, they can try to apply for a new one, renew the permanent residence card, but the, the status is permanent. Right, we, we do have quite a lot of different, yes. <laughs> I'm getting a little, <laughs> all the different names. <laughs> and then, then. So, uh, so that actually means we do provide a lot of different types of visa mm -hmm. for people with the different needs. Right. It is to provide their uh, com uh, convenience to stay here in China so they don't have to renew their visa all the time. So mm -hmm. they hold relatively longer uh, visa or say uh, residency permits so that they can stay here with no worry about renewing their visa mm -hmm. maybe every year. Mm -hmm. Actually, we have a web official website that foreigners can uh, consult with the visas or residence permit or permanent residence through this kind of official uh, information. Mm -hmm. Right, so apart from 12367 and also Mingsheng Road headquarter and also the local uh, exit entry uh, offices, we do have other ways, uh, official websites and maybe uh, uh, WeChat uh, mini programs to help people understand more about our visa policies. Um, say if someone needs to apply for a residence permit but they urgently need the passport for the business trip, what should they do? There are some ways to solve the issue. Sometimes if the people want to travel in urgent, they can provide the proof such as uh, the air, uh, flight ticket or what, and uh, prove it's urgent, we will rush it through. It normally takes uh, same, same working days to issue a visa or residence permit, but in this current case, we may rush it through, maybe uh, two or three days finished. Or if you want to travel in the middle of China, uh, he may use it with the receipt of uh, application. So the receipt of application still be, can be used as a temporary proof of uh, he, he, his stay in China when the passport is kept by us. Mm -hmm. And the third way is that uh, if it's necessary, he may apply for taking back the passport during the period of application. So within the same working days, we will give back the passport to him and uh, when he uh, after seven day working days, he can hold the passport, come back, and they will stick the visa on the passport. Right. Okay. There are several ways. There mm -hmm. are several things they can do. Um, I think we have another call on the line. Let's. Uh... Hello. Hello. Hi. What's your name? My name is Christina. Hello, Christina. What is your question? Uh, actually, I have two questions. Mm -hmm. So the first question is, uh, how can I apply for a job here in China? And like, what kind of visa I should get? after graduating from Chinese University. Mm -hmm. So, 
uh, we'll answer your first question first. Um, how to apply a job here? Well, a foreigner can apply for a work permit through the Foreign Experts Bureau to work, and uh, if she got the or she got has got the work permit, then we'll uh, give them the uh, residence permit relatively. And uh, if the current visa is not working visa. Um, it all depends. For example, if she holds a student's visa currently, it all depends. And uh, maybe the War Experts Bureau, they uh, need to ask, they may ask him to provide some documents to prove that he is qualified for the job. For example, the educational uh, requirements or the work, working experience requirements or the skill requirements. It all depends. Mm -hmm. Right, so basically you need to apply for a work permit. Um, before getting the job, so a uh, work permit would uh, would would sort of automatically issue you the residence permit. So in that case, you can go to your new job. Uh, if you haven't got the job, you need to prove that you are qualified for it to apply for the work permit. Right. Th that's the logic, right? Does that answer your Thank first you. question? Yes. And another question is about mm -hmm. the opportunities to apply for a startup visa or business visa, how you call it and requirements for a planet. So the start startup visa, mean, meaning you want to uh, uh, start up a, a business here in, in China? Yeah. Right, so... Well, she is already in China and she wants to change the status like uh, into a startup visa. She may provide some proof or evidence. For example, she is opening a company mm -hmm. and uh, she may provide some proof and we may change the the visa type relatively. For example, maybe we give him or give her a business visa for several months. That depends. But if she got uh, she's got the uh, work permit, we will issue the residence permit. But it uh, it all depends whether the company is true or not, whether the business is uh, normal or not. Because you may try to open a business, but that doesn't mean that uh, the company runs well. That depends. Mm. Right. Okay. So you you still need actual proof that you are starting up um, a, a, mm -hmm. a company, and so that you can get a startup visa or business visa. Mm -hmm. Okay. I see. Thank you. Right. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, um, so we talked about business visa earlier, and uh, business visa, startup visa, it's more of because um, you change. Uh, 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 Mr. Tsai mentioned several times of changing the status of the visa. So that means people who stay here as student, if they want to uh, have a company, they, if they want to change the status into employees, there are certain ways. There are ways for them to change the status of their their visa as well. Right. For example, maybe he. She came to China with a business visa for short stay, but uh, later she he wants to set up a company or business here. So we may change the we may change the status for him. Mm -hmm. Or she he's a student before and now he opened a company here and uh, he got the uh, um, work permit. We may also change, but it all depends. It's not necessary. To, we will issue the residence visa directly. So we'll check the the evidence. Um, to see whether it's he's qualified or everything is correct. Right. So uh, we sh we do uh, remind um, foreigners here if they need to renew their visa or change the status of the visa, they need to get the documents ready. They need mm -hmm. actual proof of what they are doing. Yeah, the, the door is open to them always, but they need to provide some evidence. Yep. Exactly, and also we um, talk about the change, and because for 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 a very long time, uh, some foreigners stay stay here in Shanghai, in China. Uh, there's one thing I believe will always change. That's their address. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they gotta move, right? So mm -hmm. when they need to update their address and also uh, a different personal information, where do they go? Well, normally the foreigner want to register his address. Normally, he he has some. Ways one is to go to the local police station to register mm -hmm. if they uh, if he stay outside the hotels, or he can apply through the internet. Mm -hmm. Have a website he can register directly with some um, how say process of registration. But if he has already got the uh, residence permit and he want to change the address, he can do it through our website and check 
with the registration of change through the uh, website directly. He needn't go to our office to apply for a new res permit. He just want, he just changed the address through this registration. Uh, how's it? Because mm -hmm. uh, this is frequently changed uh, information, so mm -hmm. uh, they don't have to always go to an, an extra uh, extra office to do it. There are a, mm -hmm. a lot of ways to do it online. Mm -hmm. So, uh, do they have to change their uh, say if they moved? Do they have to change their address information? What if they forgot? Yes, they have to register the first if they move to a new address. Oh, but if if he stay in the hotel, the hotel will register. Uh, for him when he checking, but uh, when he stay in the uh, apartment or friend's house or he rent a house by himself, he need to register either at the local police station or through the, um, the app or through mm -hmm. the uh, internet at our website. Mm -hmm. But th that's required by the law. Right. So do remember to change your yeah, yeah, to <laughs> information when they move to a new place. Right. Mm -hmm. We do have another caller on the line. Hello. Hello. Hi, what is your name? Uh, my name is Luke. Hi Luke, what is your question? So I will be graduating with a PhD soon from a university in Shanghai and I'm wondering when would I be able to apply for the permanent residence card? Would it be kind of immediately after I graduate? Right, so with the PhD degree, could he apply for the permanent residence right after the graduation? Well, if he graduated from a university and got the doctor's degree, um, he may apply for a residence permit for short, for some period mm -hmm. before he um, get uh, employed. But after he has got employed in China, for example in Shanghai, uh, we, uh, he may apply for permanent residence. Before he got the job, if he just graduated, he cannot apply for the permanent residence directly. Right, so still, it, it requires a certain change of the status. So you, you change from a student visa into employee. Mm -hmm. So th in, in that uh, uh, transformation, you, you need proof and then to also change your visa type. Yeah, so that degree is necessary, but not enough to apply for permanent residence. So it means he is employed, he got a job, and uh, he may try to apply. Right, look, so does that answer your question? Yeah, it does. But I'm just wondering, um, do I need to have a specific type of job or could it be any kind of employment? If I was, uh, if it was non-related to my degree, would that be sufficient to get this residence card? Well, the fields is not, uh, are not uh, limited. I mean, it's, it's, um, we, we just uh, accept his application if he is employed. In the, for example, in Shanghai, and by the company, and uh, maybe we need the company to issue a document to prove that he is employed by the company, and he can provide the work permit to prove that he is working here. But it doesn't matter. Normally, it doesn't matter what kind of job he is doing here. Right. So it's okay. It doesn't have to be related to what you lie in the university. There is no limitation there. Look. Mm -hmm. Is that okay? Does that answer your question? That's great, yeah, thank you so much for your help, thank you. Right, thank you. Bye. Okay. Alright, okay, so, uh, um, say, um, if someone needs to apply for residence permit, um, uh, so, um, again, we, we answered the question about, uh, you know, person had a PhD degree, who's, who's still working, uh, who's still studying in the university, who's trying to, uh, uh, say, transit, their status of the visa into different type. So, um, you know, entrepreneurs, business, uh, uh, business uh, type of uh, talents, and uh, all the talents are, are welcome to here in yes. in China. It's just uh, you need actual documents to prove mm -hmm. certain types of mm -hmm. visas to support your stay here in China. Mm -hmm. well, welcome the foreigners to study or work or visiting or touring in China. And uh, if they can provide the relative documents, and we will issue the relative visa or residence permit to them. 
Mm -hmm. So I think before we go, we need to uh, again remind all of our uh, talents and foreigners here in Shanghai. First of all, do remember to register uh, once you moved. Do register uh, online on on any uh, sort of app, and also uh, uh, maybe in the in the local um, examinatory office, just to make sure your status is up to date and it's all for your own safety as well. And also for different types of visa, you can always visit the website. You can always call one two three six seven to get extra information. Information. And when you are ready to change your visa type,、uh, you are going next level here, staying in China and Shanghai. You need the actual proof. You need the、uh, the, the real documents to support you、uh, longer term here in China, right? So、um, I think we'd like to remind everyone that one two three six seven platform also includes a mobile phone app and in-app programs on both WeChat and Alipay, offering a Chinese English、uh, language service twenty four seven. Besides. For those who are planning a long-term stay here in Shanghai, there are now uh, uh, two offices in Pudong's Zhangjiang and Hongqiao CBD, respectively, with exclusive windows for overseas、uh, talents, and、uh, they can actually handle twelve kinds of different paperwork, such as visa, permanent permanent residency, and exit entry certificates. So again, you're more than welcome to come to China、uh, to study, to start up a, a company, and to do business.、Uh, And also、uh, for all the talents out there, we do want you to come here and then to to experience a, a very different city and vibrant city of Shanghai, and also to know more about China. Well, thank you again for being here with us today to provide so many insights, and also all of our callers on the line who asked so many、uh, useful questions. And I hope this program is very much helpful to all of you out there. Thank you. Thank you. And goodbye.